Hi, good morning and welcome to Philip Stein and Associates videos. My name is Yaakov Jacob and today I'm going to show you how to download, prepare, and finally submit your personal FBAR forms electronically online. Uh, the first step is to go to this website. You know, there should be a link sent to you by one of your, uh, whoever your tax preparer is, whether it be Hillel, Ariel, Dan, or any of the other fantastic people at Philip Stein and Associates. They will send you this link, you click on it, and it will bring you to this um, this website. Once you get here, you would click on this to download, this link right over here to download the FBAR forms that you need to prepare. Um, please note that if you're filing for more than one spouse on one form, you should fill out this form as well. Just click on this link and it will open up a FinCEN Form 114A. This form allows you to just fill out your last name, first name, Spouse's last name, first name, the year, the number of well, the number of accounts, the year, and then both of you have to sign it and click whatever your social security number is over here. Um, you can leave this part blank and then just save this for your own files in case the IRS ever comes back and says, "Hey, your spouse never filed." You can just show them this form and say that you filed together. Uh, to fill out the actual FBAR form, you would click on this button. Uh, it'll open up a box on the bottom, which will say either open or save. Uh, for our purposes, I've already filled one out, so this way it'll save time. But it'll bring you to this form right over here, and this is the FBAR form. Now no longer the TDF-90, now called FinCEN Form 114. Uh, just a brief overview of how the PDF works. This is one tab. Each page has a different tab, basically. You can scroll through the pages this way. Scroll through it with your mouse, um, pressing down over here, or you could hit the other tabs, and that will take you to each section that there is. Uh, for right now, we can start at the beginning at the home section. You'd fill out your name and the year. If you're filing a prior year, this box allows you to add in any kind of uh, excuse that, the, that you would have for why you didn't file in prior years, or you can add a box to yourself, other, and then it'll give you a box to fill out the information. If at any point you want to save the form, you can save it using the general save, file, save, save as, anything you want. You can also click on the save button over here. Uh, if we scroll down, it'll bring you to the second page, also the second tab called file information. Um, you would put in 2013, for whatever calendar year you're filing it for. Your, you are the type of individual you are. Is it either an individual or corporation, generally? We can click on individual. Social security number, what type of number is it? If you're an individual, it's going to be a social security number and ITIN. So you can plug that in. All of this will be grayed out. You can plug in, unless sorry, unless it's a foreign ID, in which case then you'll have to fill this out. Over here, individual's date of birth, you can plug in your birth date. Please note that it's U.S., not Israel, so it would be month, day, year, not day, month, year. This is often common in Israel. Uh, last name, first name, middle name, you can also just put your middle initial. We'll leave it blank, your address, city, zip code, country, if it's in the U.S., obviously put the state down. Um, the next question is 14A, does the filer have a financial interest in 25 or more financial accounts? And a similar question, 14B, to signatory authority. For our purposes, we're going to mark both of them no. If they're yes, you would press yes, fill out the number, and there's not much more that you have to do. Uh, this is part two, which is where we start entering the bank or pension information. Again, it's financial account owner tab. You, you can go back to whatever tab you want. Right now we're at part two. This is where you would put in any kind of bank account information or a pension that you own yourself. No one else owns it. You own it 100%. There's no other joint owners. Um, and you have a financial interest in the account. You would put down the maximum account value here. Please note that it is a U.S. dollar number. You're not putting down the shekel amount. You're putting down the U.S. dollar amount. You have to convert the shekel by the end of year rate. 2013, the Treasury decided that that rate was 3.47. Uh, and you would put down the U.S. dollar amount over here. What type of account is it? Put down banks, securities, others. For our purposes, we're going to put down bank. Uh, maximum account value unknown. Is a box that if you don't know what the account value was, you can put down unknown. Um, financial institution name. 
in my case it would be Bank Wu Me, whatever the account number was, and the address of the bank. In this case, it's on Emic Fayim. As you can see, this is part two. It's the same part. It's number two of two. The reason why is because, let's say, I have a pension account, or I have another bank account, and I have to put down both of them in section two. You can add and delete any amount that you want over here. If I click this, it'll add a third one. Now it's three of three. This becomes two of three. You can get rid of it by pressing over there and clicking yes. Um, this is if it's a pension account that I have. Let's say I have a Karen Ishtalmut, uh, or a Karen Pensia. I just click maximum account value. Again, the US dollar amount type of account. I would put down other type pension over here. Fill it out. For me, it would be Psagot. This would be the account number and the address of the pension company. Um, scrolling further, you'll get to part three, which is this is if you have a joint account. Let's say, for example, I own a bank account with my wife. I want to fill in both for me and for her. You, or even if I'm just, this is my own F button, filing a separate one for her, you would have to put it down on both of them. This would be any account that you own jointly with someone else. Again, you can add or delete the numbers that you want. Uh, for this case, it would be, this information is going to be the same as above. You know, $30,000, it was the highest balance throughout the year in my bank Rumi account with this account number, and this is the address of the bank. Um, the only difference here is box 24, the number of joint owners. If it's a spouse, if there's only one joint owner, I would put a one there. Um, and this is the principal joint owner information. So, you know, in this case with a spouse, you would put down her or his um, social security number or ITIN number or a foreign number. If they don't have one, you can use their 2.sahoot and enter it in over there. Uh, their last name, first name, middle name or initial again, and their address. And that's part three. Uh, part four is if you are a signatory authority on the account. If you're a signatory authority, generally is, let's say, for example, you are the CEO of a company or your child has an account where you don't have a financial interest. It's their money in the account, but you're able to sign on it. You're able to make transactions from it, but it's not technically your not money. That would go on part four. Part four is similar to part two and part three. You just this information is going to be the same. Um, the only difference is the owner information down at the bottom over here. Again, you can, if there's multiple owners on it, let's say you and all of your siblings own an account, you can put it down here. Um, but generally, again, this is just for signatory authority. Uh, the, over here, you know, I'm the CEO of a company called Yakov Yakov and Yakov Incorporated. Uh, so that would be, I would put down the bank information up top here. And then scroll further down and put the owner information would be the company's information, the company's EIN number if it has one, or a foreign account number if it has one. Um, you know, their address, the company's address, and then over here is your title with the company. So if I'm the CEO, I put down CEO, partner, owner, principal, whatever you are. Uh, please note that in the country section, for all of these, I'm only talking about it now, but for all of them, you know, to get to Israel, you can click on this button and scroll down. You can also hit I, uh, you know, about, if you want to do that quickly, you can also just hit I about five or eight times, and that'll get you to Israel. Uh, scrolling further, part five, generally no one puts down part five. It's very, very rare. It's a consolidated report. Uh, it's mainly with companies that have, you know, uh, lots of consolidated accounts. It, it, we're not going to go over the information here. Uh, and again, the signatory authority, because you're preparing it yourself, none of this has to be filled out. You can just leave this all blank. So we want to go back to the top. Again, we can do that by hitting the Home tab, and that will bring us back to this Home box. Okay, great. We have filled it out. We are ready to now submit the FBAR. We're going to hit this Validate button just to make sure there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. In this case, it just needs to be signed in order to submit it. But if there's any errors, if any social security numbers are missing, any account numbers are missing, this will let you know. Uh, I'm going to come over here, hit the sign the form button. It pops open. You agree that you're electronically signing this form. And then all of a sudden, this button over here is gray. You can't click on it yet. Why not? The answer is, is that before you're able to file it, you must save the form after you signed it. So we're going to come over here, we're going to hit save, 
we're going to save it. You can save it any name you want. And it's going to name it 2013 F by Yaakov Jacob. Um, and then all of a sudden, this button over here, you're able to click and file. Please note that you can save it at any time, even if you're in the middle of doing it. It's just you have to save it again after you've signed it. But this way, if you save it at any point, you can always come back to it. You can stop in the middle of preparing it. Let's say you realize you don't have a pension document. You can always save it and then come back to it later just by going and opening the PDF. You just go to the folder wherever it is and double click on it. It'll open it. Uh, in this case, we are ready to file. So I'm going to hit this ready to file button. It is going to take me to a, a link over here where you would type in your email. In my case, yakov.psanic.com. Again, to confirm the email address, your first name, one too many A's, your last name, Yaakov, Jacob, Yaakov, Yaakov, whatever it is, your phone number. This will only take US phone numbers. Um, but you would put in a phone number and you hit this browse button. Hit browse, click on wherever you saved the file. In this case, the 2013 F bar Yaakov Jacob. Open it up, and you hit the submit button. Once you hit that submit button, the F bar has now been filed. You are done. It will give you a link, send you an email uh, to your email address that you entered in above, telling you that it has been submitted, and within a couple of days, you should hear back that it has been accepted. Um, and that is how you download, prepare, and finally submit your FBAR. If you have any other questions, feel free to call us at any time. Again, this is Jacob from Philip Stein and Associates. Have a great, great day.